Good afternoon. Right, been out on the bike ride this morning with the old men. It's a lovely time. It's a beautiful day. It's very warm. Change. It's a bit cold weather for spring, but very nice. Now, having said that, I wouldn't buy you more brushes. The, uh, two of these have arrived in the last week. This one I've had for years. That's a, a French polisher's mop, a French mop, uh, but it's number eight. It's quite large. Um, I paid £25 for that in France about 20 odd years ago. Uh, I don't know how much that would cost now. But these are much cheaper. These are high quality Pro Arts Renaissance Squirrel. Same, so that squirrel, the other squirrel. Number eight, which, uh, six, which arrived last week, and this number four. Now that is it. I'm not buying any more brushes until I do. That's the thing with art. You can make it as cheap as you like, but you're always tempted to buy more. But really, simplicity is the key. Say the most you can with the least material. A few colours, a few brushes. I mean, by all means have lots of different brushes, but don't use them all at the same time. Or in the same painting. It causes confusion. Now I'm a Korean sky man. My ambition 50 years ago, I suppose, beginning ambition as an artist, was to be able to paint trees and skies. Trees and skies, everything else came secondary to that. I put this, this figure in, in most of them, because it gives scale to, to everything and, and it uh, just leads into the picture. I've not given much thought to what I'm going to paint, other than trees, uh, western type trees if I can make, if I can manage it. Uh, right, I'm not going to wet the paper first, I'm just going to just go in with a, with a wash of, uh, of ultramarine and maybe some cobalt. So we'll just paint around the uh, clouds. These mops do hold a lot of water, which just as well. And as we come down to the horizon, we can weaken it Put a bit of something in there, a bit of, a bit of ochre, or if just a bit of red. Just, just a touch, you don't want a lot of this. You can't do this with a Fabriano that I normally use with the hake and the wet in wet. It just, it's not meant for this, it's a cheap paper, but it's good for doing what it actually does. So a bit of raw sand in there. Plenty of water. Okay. Down to the horizon. So there's my sky, that's a nice, nice sky. Uh, clouds coming up but very light because a lot of that's going to be covered up. So I'm going to, uh, I think I'll put in the path now, just, just going into the picture. So a bit of light red and a bit of that ultramarine. I think it's, it's having the right amount of water on your brush to carry through, otherwise you've got to keep reloading and trying to remix. This is the number six brush and it's a, a lovely, lovely brush. Okay, that'll do for that. So just let that bleed out there. Bring over there. Doggy. Don't know if I'll paint the dog. I'm not a dog man. I'm a cat man. Okay. Uh, right. Let's put in some some banking. A uh, bit of burnt sienna. Bit of uh, 
Okay, yellow. And a bit of hookers. The hookers I'm using is, is student quality and it's not a great strength. But it'll do. Just mix it with other colours, you don't want really to use it neat. So it just gives a lovely green, muted green with the blue, the ultramarine mixed into it. Can't really show you what I'm doing. There is some artist quality underneath the common. Oh, lovely that. Okay, that'll do for that. We can put some more stuff in there with some heavier stuff in the background. But I want that to just dry off a little bit. Right, well let's have a bit of bit of ochre. Bold. All right, okay, now we can we can detail some of this. There's light coming from the left, I think. So a bit of ultramarine, a bit of raw sienna, a uh, burnt sienna, sorry. Grey, bit of sienna, burnt sienna. Okay, that'll do. Now let's put in some some background now. Some some blue, some red. The pinch of sparkle. And I can put some deeper stuff in there. At the base of it. You just can't do this with Adriano. Very, very dry. Okay. Keep that going. That light red, very, very good for greying the blues. It's all dries lighter. And I'm going to superimpose the bigger trees in front of that. Now let's put in some, some nice rich green, blue, and ultra. And just drop that in. A bit thicker than that, I think. That's a good, good bit of a mix there. Okay. Right. Now I'm not a lover of uh, summer greens, uh, but I like I do like um, autumn and winter. So 
so uh, the light is coming from there well actually I could change that to coming from the other side I just want to take out a little bit where it's bleeding down into the into the foreground so I just want to put that on there just don't lift it out Okay, I, I, I enjoy using this paint box rather than the, the tray, but I think it's just a change after four and a half years. Uh, oh, do you know, I've been using the big mop for all that. Oh, well, let's, well, let's stay with it. Okay, so um, some burnt sienna, a touch of. A touch of um, hookers there may be a bit of a bitty raw sienna oh, let's just there's some shadow on the other side there can darken down the bottom here and same here I don't want them both the same so I'm going to put two over here I think Now, some shadow colour in there, so clean the brush and we use um, uh, blue and red and just come over with that. So that's on the shadow side, a lot of shadow on the other side. Uh, when you do this, you have to be careful you don't dip your paint in the wrong brush, in the wrong bit of paint. That's nice, nice, nice and rich. Okay, so we've got, got a big one, we'll have two trees in here, I think, and a not so big one. Okay, so far so good. So this really is a, is a painting of trees. Um, now I need to, to do some dry brushing over that. So let's just... Some dark, some umber and blue. See, it's this lovely paper, this arches paper. It is just wonderful. A little bit of. Uh, I think I'm going to go to my small, my smaller brush now. Dispense with the number eight and go on to the number. But I've got to wait for that to dry, so I'm going to give it a dry to speed up the process. There we go. Let's have a look on the screen. Uh, it's coming up. Right, uh, mute your sound now.
Okay, now into that, I'm, I'm going to put some ivy. Uh, I'm going to use, I will use the big top for that because it's got a sort of a, hasn't got a real good point on it, but it's got a fair old point though. But uh, I, I want to just put in some blue, a load of blue, a load of sienna, and a bit of paint green. Maybe a bit of hawkers, get it on the green side. Okay, so be careful here. I'll leave the base free because you don't really get the ivy thick on the base. I think we can just put in a bit of detail here, a bit of stuff. There's some nice calligraphy in that, and the same two couple here. Try and keep them different. I need that darker. So I just mix in green, sienna, ultramarine, and Payne's grey, just to give this bit of dark green ivy. Split in this kind of thing. I could go ironing handkerchiefs after this. Yeah, some things have to be done. They don't want both the same. I reckon we could still go some bit darker shadow in there. Maybe just a little bit more sienna-ish, burnt sienna on the, on the light side. Okay, now I'll go to my number, my number, number six brush and we want some nice dark, quite dark as a uh, Sienna, burn Sienna. And Ultramarine. The sort of thing that Wesson would do. I did meet Ted Wesson. We, we were both pipe smokers back in the day, and this is in 1982, and he, he was demonstrating for the art group I've been on for many years. And uh, he'd been to East Grinstead to uh, work on a do, a, do a line and wash of a Old tithe barn, it was beautiful. He did, he did all his, a lot of his drawing with a stick. That's why I do it. I'd never seen it before. I was back early in my 
my painting days. Still look wet. Oh, but he was such an engaging, a brilliant teacher. But I don't pretend to be remotely in the same class as Wesson, but then most people aren't. I was watching uh, Steve Hall with bits and pieces uh, to watch full length videos you've got to pay. And I, that's beyond the pale for me. Right, let's just get some depth in that. Now I'm going to try a bit. I can drop in a bit of, a bit of sienna in here, I think. Just warm it up a little bit. Right, okay, let's just drop that bit there. Right, I'll carry on with, the, with this. And I got three of his books. One was by Ron Ransom, the late, great Ron Ransom, who showed people like me a way to paint and be able to do something. Like, but all these things, they, they, they take time and practice. And however good you want to be, you'll never be good enough. And there'll always be people better than you. Okay, that's, that's good. So that's my favourite. I keep dipping the, into the uh, Windsor. So Percy and, and Ultramoon is the main, main dark. I love these brushes. Oh, it's a gorgeous point the, the new one hasn't, but I'll use that for other things. But I just, I don't know, something about trees, they're just so gorgeous. Uh, right, just a little bit more clear, if we don't want to overdo this, there's an autumn scene somewhere. Bit of dark and stuff on there. Right, okay, I'm quite happy with that. That would we'll work on this one, that's good. Now we need to put in some, I think some blue behind that. So we'll go back with palette blue. Steve, Steve Walsh said that Western Ray always had a, a ninth colour on his palette called Filth, palette, palette grey. Just, just fill in the gaps here. So I'm not trying for any detail, just an overall effect, just to make, not, it just says forest. Okay, I've got that, it's good enough for, or oh, I can put, put in some in here. Don't scrub it, otherwise you'll move what's underneath and that's the last thing you want to do. Okay, but I'm quite happy with that. Right now uh, a bit of let's have a bit of uh, detail on the on the grass here. So a bit of paint's grey. 
some bushes. Oh, ultramarine and burnt umber, burnt sienna, made in heaven. Okay. Roland Hilda was very good at this, putting hedges and stuff in. Nothing really, just just to fill up a a hole. We'll put shadows in there. Coming across here. Right, a bit more dark in here. I don't do too much, but I can't do it. Whoops. Right. I'll get my little brush. Make sure my brushes are clean. And always tidy up after you after you've finished. Look after your brushes. Clean your palette. So it's, you don't have to do it when you come back next day. Right now, uh, nice bit of bit of red in that, I think. So the shadow's on the right hand side, so I've got this uh, cadmium red that I squeezed out in, in here. And I'm going to put a bit of, bit of palette grey on one side. I'm sure about dogs. I'm not a doggy man, I'm just I'm not a dog painter. Well, it's pretty shadowing. His head on. Uh, give me a give me an umber head, umber and blue. But don't do too big. Let's have a Sierra dog. Oh, well, something for something, something for more like a pig. Hmm. <laughs> 
Oval. A nice title. Uh, unlike a lot of dog owners on our walks, my dog owner has got his dog on a lead. Right, shadow. Well, apologies to dog owners. Okay. Well, I don't know if that's too bad. Probably my man's a little bit big, a bit long, or not big enough. Let's get that bit of a shadow over. That side. What I want to take out is I'll get his legs more separate, separated there. So a little tissue paper. And too much. Looks like he's got a peg leg in there. Oh, it's just I think maybe you need more red, a bit of better jacket there, I think. Um, sorry about the peak. I wonder what I've done wrong, I think. It's time, something's too big, isn't it? So we can just lift that bit of his tummy. Lift that up there. Dogs tend to have a big chest. And nothing. No, it's our tummy. Let's be better. Okay, now I'm trying to make him a bit broader in the beam, in the back, not in the beam. Oh, he's a bit better. Might be a little obvious, so let's give him a coat of of uh, filth. Okay, well that, that's going to have to do. I'll find a mount for it. 
Let's bring them out. Yeah, well, I think the trees are quite good. But I was determined to have a go with my new brush. I can't say I'm as enthusiastic about it as the number six. Because this has got this gorgeous point. Credit to the brush maker's art, that is. So you just bring them to a point, squeeze out the excess moisture, get that point in, and then stick it back in its little house. Um, I think that's right. That won't last for five minutes. And same with the other one. So I'm so I'm going to use the big mop, the number eight for the uh, initial washes, and the other two for detail. So so there we are. Let's uh, see. If, sorry, I, I think I made a bit of a mess of that. In his dog. Well, let's zoom in. Oh, I don't suppose the dog is too bad. I don't know two dogs. But that is a well behaved dog because he's on a lead. We've spent half our time in the Tuesday mornings avoiding dogs off leads. And we get the blame. We should know better. We should be, know how to act around dogs. Not my dog, madam. Right, okay. So there we are. Uh, I'll find a title for it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.